So while I'm waiting on that switch to come, I thought I might just bring you along. We've got a, another one of those uh, 1.8 litre Holden Astros. Remember that water pump that I did? That took a long, you know, it took me a fair bit to smash out. Well, it's another one of Tom Belton water pump. And uh, there's no history of this having a. Hang on, we'll just get this up in here a bit. Bolts there, you got to get a little bit of stuff out of your way. But there's the water pump. And if you have a look closely, you can see. I took my screen a bit so I can see. If you have a look down in there, you can see a residue of water, water mark or coolant mark. That's the water pump. That's what I had to smash to pieces to get out last time. But uh, hopefully, this won't be such a biggie. Well, they don't take long to do, really. You know, you've got to pull a couple of bits off. But, uh, anyway, quite simple. There's a, a mark in that uh, plastic cover there. Housing. A mark on the pulley for the crank. And the upstairs marks. And these are our upstairs marks. We've made little reference marks here with a, with a notch in that, a notch in that. That's a little reference mark there. And my plan, or well, the idea is that these will, through the centre of the, of the bolt, those two there will... How about I get a ruler and we'll just show you. This is the best way to make sure that you're on the, on the money. So through the centre of the bolts, there's our marks. And they're going to be a little bit off because... Oh, hang on. They're going to be a little bit off because we have stretch in the belt. So, that's all you've got to do is leave yourself some red foot marks there. They're going to be joined across. This is an 18, 18 uh, engine. Anyway, let's get the belt off her and we'll... Uh, Check out that water pump. Yeah, this will give you a good indication on this, how much this is stretched. When this is adjusted, and this is the adjuster here, you try and turn this. This is spring loaded. As you can see, I'm turning this spring loaded. Up in here, I don't know if you can see it. Hang on. Uh, it's a bit awkward, but there's a little there's a little pointer notch. Goes up the top here. Can we, can we see it anywhere? It's a little pointer notch, and it should be central of. Can't, it's really hard to see. I should, I should get a pencil, a little, tiny little, one of them little what's it can. What do you call? Can you see it? Can you see the indicator up in there? Oh. Oh. Yeah, mate, making a movie. Trying to get the shot, brother. Trying to get the shot. Get the shot. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, right. You can see the little, just at the top there. You can see the, that little. Oh, it's it's hard, isn't it? You see that little pointer there? That's supposed to be in the middle, and that'll give you an indication on how much that. Be able to stretch if you have a look at that, but I'll, I'll show you when we set it up how to adjust it. <laughs> now, anyway, let's get the belt off and uh, we'll have a look. Yeah, so there's the tensioner and there's the, the little pointer I was talking about. You're supposed to set it up in the middle there. Of course, it was down here indicating it had quite some stretch in the belt. So, I really couldn't tell you this is supposed to be done every 60,000 k. But as you see, I've got nothing holding, I'm not using any special tools. 
you know. Everything's Torx. Hand tools. No big deal. No cam retaining gadgetry. We just flick the bolt off, we flick the belt off. We'll go upstairs, we'll pull the, uh, pull the belt off the cam shaft. So if you have this lined up like this, these cams won't move. I and mean, you make sure they don't move. You, know, you don't need to... Um... <clears throat> you don't need to move the cams. And there's the belt, she's off. Let's have a look at her. Yeah, yeah, that, that one's going to last too much longer. That one's going to last too much longer. Yeah, it's probably about about time you, you normally do a general motor, so it's been done by hold. I doubt that's. I doubt that. It's got 130 or something thousand K, so I doubt that's the original original belt because as I say they're supposed to be done at every 60. But anyway, we're gonna change, we do a kit. We'll change the idlers. Yeah. You know, the point was change, changing the belt if the idler locks up because it's old. get one of these to freeze up and what will happen of course is that it'll wear the belt off the back off the belt and snap once they snap well it's a good bite of the cylinder head probably the probably the bottom end anyway come we'll get on to that, that water pump three little torx bolts one there one there one over here and of course you're going to want to pull that out of there there's a locator for the pump there you can see there um, and of course, you want to uh, catch the coolant or whatever, so it doesn't go over your floor. And I'm using this look. There's remnants from the last water pump I had to change. Remember that one? It had all that uh, that had grown into the engine. Anyway, I'm going to undo that. And I'll have a look at it. So hopefully, it'll come out easy this time. Or maybe you'll get to see it get smashed out of there. Bolts are up. Oh, look at the water pump. See ya. She's gone. Now, I wonder how that's going to come out. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is get a bar. I'm going to pound it down on here. And hopefully it's all going to come apart. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do another smash it to pieces job. Oh, this one moves. Now I'll leave it sitting there. This one moved, that's a good sign. Yeah? I'm amazed. Uh, drop him down there. She's knackered anyway. No, I missed me bucket. I missed me bucket. No, I missed me bucket. We got spillage. We got spillage, bud. I'll borrow a half inch extension of you. Sure can. Get out of the top of that box. Thanks, bud. So you saw it had a, I've just tightened it up. But well, that's knackered. Happy days. Yeah, if you look, you can see that it's almost started to grow, so we, we were lucky, I think. We were lucky. That's about all. But, um, so we'll replace that. Along with the belt. Two idlers and the tensioner, and uh, yeah, that's probably about half hours work. 
There you have a look. There's my mark. This is the reason I do this and put marks in places. Because when I give that a bit of a pounding shock there, we've moved off the mark just as like a, a what have we got, a half a tooth. That's no big deal, we'll just turn it back. Until she lines up again, we'll check it with the ruler across. A straight edge or whatever you want to call it. Uh, before we install the belt. Distributed by GMB Japan. Doesn't say where it's made though, does it? At least these do. That's Germany. That's the tensioner. Uh, yeah, mate. And a belt from Japan. Now from Germany as well, so that's all good quality. So there we go with the new pump in. As you see, there's not really a lot on those washers that hold it, hold the thing on, but uh, that's it. Just firm. That's all you need to do them up. You don't need to crank on them, just firm spine. Right, we'll get the rest of the stuff together. So there's our tensioners, our um, idlers there. They all come with new hardware which you want to use, and there's the tensioner. Uh, there's our markings. It tells you there. New belt. And uh, if you really needed to, you could um, you could read the how-to. But um, yeah, so a decent kit comes with all new hardware. Let's whack it together, eh? Now there's obviously going to be a torque setting for these. Uh, you can look that up if you're doing this job yourself. But um, experience tells me what you know how tight to do these. I've done plenty of them over the years. Yeah, so we'll go to the next stage. We'll get the we'll get the big lucky band around her. Okay, so I've started putting the belt on. And if you have a look closely, you can see there's a screwdriver just, just sitting inside there, holding that belt up into the teeth. And when we put the tension on this, everything's lining, everything's going in, see? Now the next bit's going to be a bit tricky because we've got to hold this gear in its correct position. I don't know if this is going to work for us, but what I do normally, or generally, so not normally, but generally, I get a, uh, <clears throat> get a torque socket little fit, just carry on. Turn that round to there, so that where our marks are lined up again, like so. Yeah. Push our belt back a little bit. Holding that in position is the difficult bit. So. to stay there's a good part. Sorry gang. We can rely on the good old zip tie to hold that in, in its little slot there in its position. Just like that, see? Tie that on there. We're in position here. It actually goes a little bit more. There we go. Happy days. Little, I've got tension down here. Got tension up here. 
The next is we'll get the tension set up on the, on the bottom of it. Now as you can see we've got uh, still got my screwdriver in holding things. What I need to do is to get that little slot lined up into that little oh, where are we? Into that little dimple. The time and mark is gonna the uh, tension of mark is gonna be up tuck up behind that belt there and then we'll adjust him. I'll just get that on two hands is all I got today. So we've got it up there, no big deal. That's an eight millimetre Allen key. And what we'll do is we'll add tension. Until the pointer, did you see the pointer move there? I'm not sure if you get it. You might see the pointer move. Well, anyway, trust me it does. So we get it. Up into the right range. And that's an awkward thing to see whilst you've got a camera in your head, but so I'm gonna to have to leave you with that for a second and I'll set the torque up. Set the set set the tension on that tensioner. So there we go. Eight millimeter, turn it clockwise direction. Then once you get it into your uh, into the correct place you just lock it in with the uh, with the bolt. Now it's back to putting it back together time. Snip this off. Down here. Sacrificial zip tie. Take my... Hang on. Got to let the hoist down a little bit more. Hang on. There we go. So there we go, we're in line, we're in line, we've got tension, we've got tension, we've got tension, shall we get our rule? Check it out, why not? Alright, across the middle of the bolts, there we go, the back though. Across the middle of the bolt, see that? Where are we? There we are. Middle of the bolt, middle of the bolt, two marks. Perfect off. Now, what you would normally do in this situation is uh, they do tell you to wind the thing around, uh, making sure that. You, know, you wind it around a number of times, making sure that these the line down the bottom there lines up each time, and these all line up each time. Uh, probably worth a smack on the hand for me, but I don't do that because um, experience tells me I'm done all right. Anyway, we'll whack it together and we'll uh, start her up. So it's back in reversal, bottom cover first, we'll get that underway. So there we go, we've got the pulley on the bottom, the cover on this, the bottom section of the cover on, it's just, it's just clip on, top section's got bolts, don't forget the cam sensor. <laughs> yeah, I've done it, I thought, oh, I'll be alright, and I'll go, oh, bloody cam sensor, but, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this top cover on with its attaching bolts and then we'll crank her up before we put any more together and make sure she runs. It will run. Oh, I know I said I was going to start it up before putting any more on, but I forgot. My bad. We can't start him because we have a airflow meter to install <coughs> with the rest of the airbox. So we'll hook all that up and we'll, uh, we'll fire her up. There you go. All back together again. Let's crank her up. Are you ready? What's going to happen? Uh. We'll go for oh. climbing through the window. Go to park. Yep. Beautiful. 
Job done. So now I have to clear a code that was in it. I don't even know what the code was because I didn't scan it, but... It's a, no, mate, you haven't. No, I haven't. Um, down between the seats. So I'll wipe the scanner on. I'll turn the reds on. And we'll give it a shot. Be quiet. I'll bring you back when I get her all uh, logged up. So I would normally, you know, with a Holden, you'd get a Holden, but this one being the German, this is Opal. So we'll go with Opal. All the versions. And, uh, See what code it held. I don't know whether it, I don't know what it might, maybe it, it, it's got a low coolant code or maybe a camshaft or out of range or maybe even a knock because of the, the rattle in the pump, maybe. I don't know, possible. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's diagnostics. That's a 2006. It is an Astra, mm, I think G, engine. Uh, page down, 18XE. Yes, we're on, we've done that, we've done that. So it's actually quite an easy job. I've taken a little bit extra time because I've been running the camera, but oh, everyone communicating. Okay. We'll go with XEL then. Um you should probably knock it over in an hour. Something like that. Give yourself maybe maybe Oh, they're uncommunicating. What's going on? What's going on? Extra, we got Astra H. Engine. Z18. That looks more like it. Sorry guys, pushed the wrong button. No, I'm not recording anything. Your system, yes. I did that. Did I? Never that one. There's so many variations in those damn things. Alright. Trouble codes. Read. Ah, so it needs a, needs a coil or it needs plugs. Okay, there's some more good news for them. Because it's, um, because it only says it's cylinder number one, it's probably going to be spark plugs, I'll bet they're knackered. Anyway, we'll clear that code out of it. And, uh, that's done. Check what should go out. There we go. All right. So I've just got to wait for coolant to get here. We've got proper coolant coming for it. Mm. And that'll be that.